on this episode, trash talking, sportsmanship, showboating. I don't know. What do you think, Coach? Yeah, you know, these, these are the – I think people want black and white a lot of times in sports, and today you hit on the gray area right? <laughs> of, of, you know, of what that line is between crossing over from confidence to arrogance or however you want to describe it. But uh, that gray area can get, get, can get dicey at times. <laughs> For sure. Trevor? Yeah, it was cool to kind of hear the different uh, sides of who's on what side and what, what can fly and what Always can't picking fly. sides here in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I think it's one of those subjects that, you know, there is so much gray area with it someone's always going to be mad. Yes. You know what I mean? So I think you got to find what your style is, and hopefully it's not too far over the line. Yeah, I think there's a ton of value on this podcast. It was really exciting just, like, sharing these thoughts and ideas and stories. Let's go to the show. Coach's Clinic Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. Our coaching staff's amazing. We got Mike Deegan, Tyler Treadway, Dustin Myers, brought to you by Muscle.com, NSF certification, right, Treadway? Yes, sir. Tell them real quick about that. Yep, so uh, coaches of collegiate sport, professional sport, high school sport, whatever you need, we have the NSF certification that now allows you to provide our amino recovery lemonade to your kids. It's tested against 400 ingredients to make sure that they won't test positive for any sort of banned substance. Um, everything that is on the label is actually in there. They test it to make sure that we don't lie to you. Um, the same great product you were taking before, now you can just give it to your athletes. Wow, I love it. Imagine that the NCAA is like the OG neighborhood gangster. <laughs> this is the hood pass. Break it down, break you, it down. You, you got the hood pass now. They can't mess with you. Facts. The lemonade is legit. Nah, super legit. And the people that we've been sending it out to, which we will not talk about yet, there's been some heavy people asking about it. So it's exciting. Yep. So thanks for jumping in on the quick little commercial. Yes. All right, so today I wanted to throw out to you guys. Deegan, I'm going to start with you. Sportsmanship over competition. Where is the line? Because you get guys that are super competitive, and then it's like it, they go over the line because then they're, they're not – in a in a healthy amount of a sportsmanship and then there's the guys that are too nice mm -hmm. that don't have it's like have you ran into where you're like ah that's over the line oh that's mm -hmm. like where in baseball or do you have like some just random thing you've ran into where you're like yeah maybe i went over too much there that's under you know what i'm saying i think it's really an interesting thing because especially in youth sports you see the the parents of the kids mm -hmm. are wild right? right and you're like yo but then like as you get older and then it's like, you know, I don't know. I just think it's an interesting kind of con like concept of where that line is. Oh, man, it's a tough one. <laughs> you know, off with. Cause I, yeah, I mean, there's, um, there's a gray area that, to me. You know, I'm, I'll just start and we'll kind of kick it around yeah. here touch, but there's, there's feel and no feel. Right? Ooh, like, okay. Like you, you have, I'm digging in. You, you have to, I mean, there, look, there's a, um, there's a line and that, that line can get blurry at times as to it what does. that line is. Uh, but as as a competitor, I think we know what that line is, and at times you go over that line, and that's where coaches come in, and, and you can kind of reel guys in. And um, I guess you know there's a Mike Tomlin line of it's a lot easier to say whoa than sick them. So so you know I think you'd almost rather like be, able, be able to pull the reins in rather than than, than the whip, mm. you know, because if you have someone who's too passive and afraid to get into that competitive spirit. Um, but there is there is there is a um, I think there is a a shared uh, respect a shared uh, common interest amongst competitors that hey once we're in this amphitheater like it's it's going to be on and we're going to compete and we're going to do everything we possibly can between the lines to make this you know to be successful but then to me it's like once we we get out of that arena how do we get back to being good sportsmanship mm -hmm. people you know so I guess I'm not answering the question directly but inside the lines you're going to have to compete and sometimes you know the dog is going to come out yeah. and there's going to be some things that maybe get said or that's a little bit controversial but the ability to shut that thing down whenever whenever it ends and then move forward i, I think that's where you know you start seeing some things there was a uh, real quick there was a, a division two wrestling match i don't know if you saw that where um you know the guy won it was kind of a heated match it was this year and I just saw the guy, like the, the guy who lost came over. He didn't put his hand up. Then he pushed him in the back. Now my my guess is that's probably they were he they were heavyweights. Right? Heavyweights. Yeah. 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 So I, anyways, that was just part of it. I just saw part of it. Well, so anyway. and I, I saw the video the day that it happened. It was at NCAA, um, you know, Division two nationals, mm -hmm. and the video was out. And the kid that did it, the kid who did the shoving, immediately quote tweeted and said, "You know, I apologize. I lost yep. my cool. I'm not making an excuse. I'll grow from it." So he, right away he addressed it and just said, "Hey, like I messed up." Mm -hmm. And I think that um, 
you know, obviously you'd rather he not did that, but at least he handled it the right way after that, you know? So, the, and, and that, that's where he went over the line because it was so competitive. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it can ha- those things can happen. I think I think it's how you approach it in the in the in the aftermath. Now, there's obviously things, right? You can't do something terminal and say, "Hey, I'm sorry, I can't." Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. that. That's also kind of a cop out too. At times, I'm not saying that one. I'm saying, you know, there there are certain things that are probably too egregious that yeah. apology won't well, do it. But I I think you know an example like that. We can all agree that that's bad sportsmanship and that shouldn't be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think, you know, maybe more what your question is about, not so much that type of stuff, more the, the showboating and the, that, too. that kind of the all of, all of, all it, of it, I, I guess, yeah. right? So, you know, I think I always look at, I think, you know, celebration and showboating to an extent is good. I think it's positive because mm-hmm. it gets... There's a line, dude. There's that's a line. What I'm saying. That, <laughs> I, and I think the line is when it becomes disrespect directly towards your opponent, that's okay. when it's bad. So, like, I think, hey... I just won. I'm flexing at the camera. That's good. Yeah. If I'm flexing in the guy's face who's laying down, yeah. then that's bad. You know. So mm-hmm. I think it, it, it's a really fine line. But I think when it starts to cross into disrespect, would you rather have a kid be care so much that he goes and pushes that kid and then says sorry after, like because you know it probably was burning and maybe there's something that happened in the match. I don't know. That's just a po- uh, question. What do you I, think? I think at that point when it's after the fact the match ended, it's too late. It has to be over. Yeah, it, it has to be over. When the, when the whistle blows and it's like, all right, yeah, you shoved him in the back. It was a pretty egregious <laughs> shove. Was. Too. The guy wasn't even facing him. Mm-hmm. So it's like, hey, at that point it's too late. You should have you should have went harder in the match. So, yeah, I, yeah. so I wouldn't want that. No. Yeah, okay. But the, the killer pulling back. Yeah, in, in some sport, like on a football or something like that, or even in, in re- the aggressive like that wrestling, like you probably want that edge. But it's like when you're, you know, I, I you know, I, I think back to myself as a competitor, um, and there's there, you know, you don't live with regrets, but I, you sometimes have to get out of your own mind, and and so sometimes there's a bit of showmanship that has to take place, and it, but it's actually just to get you in, the, in your best performance zone. Like if you watch um, like ma- I, 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 baseball, if you watch like major league relievers come in, they all have like a little shtick about them. I mean, they all and you know, they get down in there, they do yeah. some crazy stuff. It's not their normal behavior. It's not what they do normally, but they're getting their mind. They're they're dealing with nerves, anxiety, all yeah. that stuff. So they're trying to do something to compensate for that. So sometimes it's a bit of an act, but it's an act to get myself going, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, and, and, and how I have to get myself going to perform at my best is going to be different than you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would agree with what D said, like once that, once it ends, like, and, and there's like, there's maturity that comes along with that. Yeah. So that, that's not a life sentence for that person who pushed the, I'm not saying that, but once it ends, like then it's, then it's too late. Like you had your chance in that moment, in the amphitheater, you had the chance to do whatever. But now when it's over, it has to, it yeah. has to be over. I think if he would have actually pushed him, like, during the match, it's a more excusable offense. Yes. Like, hey, that was yeah. still wrong. But, hey, like, the whistle blew, match is over, he's facing away from you. Then you look you. like a sore then, loser, yeah, basically. Yeah, which, yeah. He, which he was, and yeah. he even said that, you know, yeah. he's a sore yeah. loser, there's no yeah. excuse. But it but. shows maturity that he came and chirped it right. Correct. That's pretty cool. But I, th- I think it's just – it's definitely more forgivable. And if you got someone who does it heated in the moment, it's easy to be like, well, hey, you know, that's my guy. I'm glad he cares mm-hmm. that much, and mm-hmm. he just crossed the line for a second. Charlie. So before I get to my response, I want to ask Deegan a question. All right. Actually, it's two questions. <laughs> so, because I feel like your answer is probably going to be different than mine. Uh, how do you feel about two things in baseball? One, pimping a home run. Ooh. And two, giving a guy chin music if he might have pimped a home run. Oh, because baseball's Wait, got all these rules. Baseball has too. the unwritten no, like, rules that you hey, can't like. Time out. I don't know what either of these terms yeah, yeah, mean. I, I can't yeah, wait to learn. Please, please, yeah. <laughs> so, so like, let's say you hit a home run. This is yeah, great. Yeah. This is a great shift, by the way. And I love you, this. You like the, the you popular bat, thing bat is flip. you flip the bat. Like right? fuck you, like, off. I just hit. You just toss it, and yeah, that, that's right. called pimping a home run. Yeah, basically. Okay, yeah. all right. You sit there. You watch it. You're watching the like you know because in baseball they teach you like when you hit the ball you're supposed to just run yeah, right yeah. run to first whatever so like you hit it and you just know it's gone and you just sit there and stare at it and then you like flip the bat or you know you you look at the stare the pitcher down whatever so then the next time either that guy or the next guy at bat they'll give him a little chin music where they throw at him they they try Basically, to hit him brush on him off the plate a little yeah. bit yeah mm-hmm. they'll throw ninety like. Right really at him. Really clo- close to him, yeah. yeah. Or hit him. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, 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 I mean. It's some OG baseball, like, etiquette yeah. rules type of situation. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of caught like, in, the, in the middle of that era. I mean, I, I was raised to, you know, I was – I, I, I've shared this story before, but I, I hit a home run, and the biggest home run I hit in my life was in, in a regional. And 
I, I put my fist up like this and I threw it right down because I, I said, shit, my dad's watching this. And if my yeah. dad sees me showing him, like, you know, that's like he'll he'll come off the field and take me off. That was, <laughs> he, 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 he told me, I scored a test down in eighth grade and, I, and I, I threw my hands up like this. He said, if I ever do that again, I'll take you by the ear and I'll pull you <laughs> off and I'll embarrass you in front of your friends. And my dad was one of those guys and when he spoke, like it wasn't, it, yeah. it, it wasn't like a hard dude, but like yeah. if he said it, he meant it, yeah, you know. Yeah. So anyways, uh, so I, I was raised like that. I do think some emotion is good, though. You know, I, I think I think emotion is good in the game of baseball. We need some we need some more. Um, look, the the demographic is getting older and older and older. And yeah. how do you reach a younger audience? And some of that people do like the celebrations, but once again, if it's if it's inward, if it's inward, if it's for you and your teammates, that's one thing. Throwing the bat at the pitcher, throwing the bat in the other dugout, those types of things, you're crossing the line. I don't love it. I mean, we. Our guys have gotten a little bit, a little bit. I've gotten a little looser with it over the years. In context is everything too. Sometimes yeah. you have a rival who've done, who have done some things that, you know, that you didn't agree with, and, and maybe you turn your guys loose a little bit. But um, so that's the one piece. As far as the the, the chin music, I just think you got to be really careful there. So I'm going to give a little conservative line. Um, you know, at our level, our guys don't command the ball like they do in the big leagues. So you can mess around, try to throw a little chin music, and hit a guy in the face and, and break do, his orbital bone, and do yeah. some and do some real damage. You know, so I, I don't I don't think that's necessarily the case. But when you have when you do when you show antics like that, you put yourself out there because, you know, I don't make the rules, and 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 you may have a different opinion on this, right? So if I bat flip and throw uh, throw the bat towards you. You may throw one up and in, and if you throw one up and in, and it gets away from you and hits me. That's like now we got a messy situation. So, I, I would prefer that the game stays the game, and and it's really not about that. I will say this: um, I think a lot of that stuff dis distracts from winning, like, mm -hmm. and that's and that for me, um, I, I always say like average programs or people who aren't aspiring to try to win at the highest level. Sometimes they need gimmicks. Like we tell our guys, just keep playing. Like just keep playing, like because none of that's going to help the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that's my coach speak part. I say it. that's the right coach answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, for us, we're trying to win. Yeah. So right. all that stuff is a distraction. It can be a distraction, right? Now you throw up a name. We hit, you hit our best player. Our best player goes out for the season. Um, yeah. It, it, what, was it worth a bat flip? You know. So, anyways, it's 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 a big topic right now because you're seeing crazy stuff on there now. You're seeing guys like shoot the ball down. <laughs> yeah. like, like, <laughs> things you never would have saw five or six years ago. Yeah. Some people were loving it. In, and, in the MLB, are they doing it like that? Not, not, not as much, but you're seeing you're seeing it's, more. It's happening, T -t 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 there's guys, Yeah, there's guys with, guys with more flair, you know, and and there's a market. But, but to your point, baseball needs it baseball, a little bit. They need something. Sure. They, yeah, they do. They, you need to reach a younger audience. Now, I don't think anyone can debate that. Mm -mm. That's good. Go ahead, Trevor. I, I like he's, it. Yeah. He's fuming right. He's got no, 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 yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Like, if, if you want to hit a home run and stare down the pitcher, that's fine. But just know you got something coming. Like, yeah, it's like an understood see, thing. I always yeah. think like these athletes work so hard for these moments. I mean, think how many home runs did you ever hit in your life? Not you work so hard for those moments. When you get it, you should get to celebrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. You should get to go like this. In turn, but yeah, yeah. I think like uh, an or organic celebration that's natural. I agree. And then, but then over the line where it's like disrespectful. So that, but then that's also where like. You got that line of like great athletes run it often. I oh, think yeah. look at like prime time, bro. Like he ran that line. Well, he was probably over the line most of the time. But did that then contribute to why he was so great? Because he believed you can't guard me. You, I can guard you. I'll shut you down. Don't throw to this side of the field. Like and if I get it, I'm gonna high step it all the way. Well, think about what would he be over the line by today's standards? It's yeah. a different era, you know. Yeah, I mean? true, Where true. He kind of maybe helped usher in like the mm -hmm. you know the showboating a little bit. And stuff. Yeah, so, for sure. What was it? There was a, they used to do those thirty for thirties on ESPN. Mm -hmm. They did the the eighties, the, uh, the U and the yeah. Oh yeah, oh, those guys and, were amazing. And, and they were, they got like one game they had like fifteen personal fouls. They, yeah. and, and, and they won by thirty or something. Yeah. But they just kept late hits, celebrations. They didn't care, you know and. So yeah, I think prime. And why are, am I drawn to that stuff though? I I, I think it's sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's that way, yeah, it is. So we're, you know, but I I've always been drawn to athletes like that because I think of the, it must be the confidence. It's the confidence. Yeah, yeah 100%. I, even Johnny Manziel at A and M. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I was I was glued to the TV. Dion glued to the TV. Like I wanted that was like to me. You were showing up to see. You were being entertained, but you thought nine times out of ten they were going to deliver mm -hmm. because of that confidence. So I think that part of my lifting came from being growing up that way. If I can unrack it, I can squat it. I believe in one million percent. So when I don't miss it, I, or when I do miss it, like I missed one today, I was surprised. But mm -hmm. you know, whatever, I'll get back tomorrow. But it's like I believe I'm going to win every time. So I don't know. It's part. I think it's part of the mentality. I love the evolution of things too, because you know, 
sometimes you need that to get you to a certain point. Mm. And then you start getting into a different space where like I, I, like I think of the New England Patriots where they, you know, it's just about winning there. So yep. you don't see a ton of the flash, but sometimes you need some eccentric guys to get you to play loose or whatever. But then the higher state games, I, you know, my, my good friend just coached in the final four, you know, the coach Vanderbilt at Marietta and, and to watch his evolution, he went from a guy who was like full of energy and, and rebuilding a program and took that program from nothing to here. But then once you get to here, you also got to be able to have a calm mind in those really emotional situations yeah. and be cerebral and make the right calls. And so sometimes, like, emotion can take – emotion can hurt you. Uh, I think like I a, a, a Baker Mayfield. Like, people are like, oh, they love watching him sprint down the field when they get a touchdown. But an NFL quarterback probably needs to get his ass to the sidelines and, like, look at the iPad <laughs> yeah, and see what yeah. the defense is – because yeah. that emotion is only going to take you so far. You yeah. know what I mean? Because, like, once, he, once the, the, the talent level gets so high – that showmanship doesn't always help you win. So I think those are some of the things you play with as a coach, as a leader, is, okay, is this, once again, is, it, is this contributing to making that squad? Is it contributing to us winning the game? Or now has it become a bit of a distraction? And I think you're always kind of trying to feel that temperature in the room. Well, I know, like, uh, sometimes if I would get too riled up, because of I'm, I'm heading against some weight, I could be out of position. That's right. So there is, like, but I need some of it because it, it ha it's in an animalistic, like, kind of like thing I need to handle. So it's like, it's on that, it's running that line. Mm -hmm. But I remember on my last squat, the one that I hit the record on, I remember feeling super calm as I, as I was actually taking it, I mm -hmm. wasn't all riled up. I was riled up, up to it. And I knew I need, but it was like, there's that mix. That's really tricky. So, well, so I remember, so back in the day when I used to do, you know, bench meets with you mm -hmm. guys, I think it would have been probably the last one we ever did maybe down in Grove city or something. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I got 315 and I used to do this thing. Like I would kind of smack myself. I still do that before a big lift, but before I would bench, I would like jump in the air real loud and like, yo, you know, well, I did that. And then I missed 325. Mm -hmm. I got off the bench and like one of the spotters or judge where I looked at me, he goes, he goes, you are, you used up all your ATP before you got on the bench. Yeah, and I was true. like, I'd never thought about it like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. I think probably that time I was like, what's ATP? Yeah, you know, of but, course. But either way. Yeah. So it's like, I'm, I used that explosive energy and then like there wasn't enough time to recharge. Mm -hmm. So it was taking away from, I thought it was helping me. Right. Cause it was like a mental thing, but really it was taking away from me. Like you, you, yeah, you were getting so hyped, but ah, actually, I jump as high as I can. But you need to have that hypeness at some point. I guess I, I, we're kind of hitting on the same thing. Like yeah. you needed that to a certain point, but, but, then it, but you, it was detrimental at that. Yeah. But then the it was just about execution and then it took away from your performance. Yep. No, that's good. Did you answer the original question? Uh, no, <laughs> Go ahead. so, so it's kind of two parts, right? Okay. So, when I was coaching uh, this past season, we were playing our rivals, and they're chirping us on social media the whole week, whatever. And then we came out and just absolutely decimated them. Who's your rival? Uh, Licking Heights. Okay. So it's a big game for us. It's at home. All the football players come. Like we have a huge student section. We score our first goal, and the uh, entire team runs over and celebrates with the student section. Yeah, you know, they did this shit at Granville too. It's right. sick. I think it's it's awesome. Yeah. Well, the AD was like, yeah, no more. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, don't you want your kids to, you know, celebrate everything they work hard for? Like, these are rivalry games. Like, these are memories that these kids are going to have their entire life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when we played you guys, that's what our kids did. It, exactly. They slid into the slid in section. I've never seen because <laughs> I had never even been. I went because you I went to our own high school because <laughs> right. Treadway was across the you know sidelines. But when when one of those kids scored and they slid into the student section, which was a bunch of football guys and what they was fucking hype mm -hmm. and it and it elevated everybody. Yeah. I think it didn't feel did it feel disrespectful to you guys? Not at all. Okay, interesting. Not at, I'm, hey, if you score a goal, yeah, like absolutely do it. So on the flip side of that, when I was coaching him at my alma mater, um, you brought up Johnny Manziel, and um, my cousin was a, a huge Browns Johnny Manziel fan, and every time he would score a goal, he would do the money sign to me. Love it. Just just to me. Like, he would, like, score a goal, come up to the sidelines, and just come up to me, not, like, making it in the opponent's face, but he would do, like, the money thing, and I would do it back. Well, we did that, and the opposing coach threatened to fight me. <laughs> and the, in, the, in the parking lot, he's like, you're being disrespectful. I was like, look, man. That's whatever. If he turns to your player and he's, like, doing it in his face, that's disrespectful. He was doing it to you as a coach. He did so. it to me. It was kind of an internal thing that we had. Yeah. And I'm like, how are you going to be so disrespected by something so small? And that's where it kind of goes back to me, like, growing up, watching 90s basketball, mm -hmm. everybody was chirping everybody. Yeah. And in my opinion, I'm going to – 
talk trash the whole time. Because if you're not mentally strong enough to handle my trash talk, yeah. that's on you. And now I have an advantage over you. So you like, so you're pro trash talk. I'm pro trash talk. Mike, what about you? Uh, once again, I, I, I mean, <laughs> time but, out, time but, out, time out. <laughs> Coach Deegan, you're on the hardwood or sorry, the blacktop back in the mm. day. You're handling the ball. You're not chirping anybody. Oh uh, yeah, just just once again in context. I mean, yeah. I, I think I, I mean I I remember telling yeah a, a big game that this kid was chirping me and his dad was the coach. I remember saying telling your dad you better switch you know switch up. <laughs> you better tell your dad you got to get somebody else on me. But but like stuff stuff yeah. like, stuff like stuff like that. But but that's small. Ba- like, baseball's a little but different. That, than but that's basketball. in context. Yeah, yeah. That's in context. Sure. I, but I'll, I'll say this: like it, it all depends on the mission of your program. The, the best Got compliment it. of being a Mary, like a Marietta baseball player and and being there for nine years coaching and all that stuff is people go, you know what, Marriott is unbelievable because they they treat you with the the, the most respect, but then they, they but you always leave on losing. Like you yeah. always, leave, you know. So I got it. you go to Marietta, you're gonna get you're gonna get good accommodations. They're gonna tell you, hey, whatever you need, Brew the head coach will say, here's the the food places for after the game, whatever you need. But then you walk out with a loss, you know. So, anyways, like that to me, like that's how I would always want to run a program. Like that, it's just the utmost class. And and but we're winning, and you're losing. So you talked, you you had a good time. You talked, you bat flipped, but you're riding home. But on you're a loser. loser. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're riding home on a loss while I, we're. I like this spot though because think about chirping now. Social media chirping. It's not as much like how it used to be. Yeah. Like when we're younger. So D, like in wrestling, is there is there room for that? Like do kids chirp each other socially you know i don't think it's i don't think it quite happens quite as much in wrestling because well first of all wrestling there's still kind of like the old guard that's like you don't yeah. celebrate after a win yeah. you just get your hand raised you shake hands walk off the mat a lot of the younger guys are starting to do more yeah. the like the showboating stuff which i think i think is good for the sport they're doing Fortnite dances after they win yeah you yeah. know reese would break dance he'd win the u.s that's open true. he would do the windmill and stuff would he catch heat for that no nah, i mean maybe some of the old timers yeah. i'm sure but I think those things are just like you talked about with baseball. We need that stuff to get mm. fans interested and get them engaged. But as far as the trash talking, I don't think it happens quite as much just because in this sport you are actually going to get to beat the other person. <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean, so I can't. They call it fighting in most in, yeah. in most countries. Correct. You know, <laughs> so it's like you can't really run your like I can't run my mouth about Treadway if I know like when I wrestle him, he really is actually going to beat me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, it maybe happens a little bit, but. You know, I'll tell you the most disrespectful thing that I ever Please. saw a team do, and this was Penn State. You know, <laughs> so Penn State is—I guess you could consider them our rival. They're a dynasty right now. They—they they are the standard for college wrestling. And we had a dual meet at home. This is probably three years ago. We're hyped for it. You know, Collins maybe a junior that year. Pletcher, we got a loaded team. They're loaded. You know what I mean? And you know our guys go out and warm up first. It's, you know, twenty minutes before whatever. Penn State comes out right before the dual meet starts to do their warm ups, and they came out and they played flag football. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, just I mean, because you guys they're getting focused, but they came out and played flag football. Like we ain't even taking this serious. Like we're not even taking this serious. We're not even sweating it. We're just here having fun. They're laughing. They're joking. They're like tackling each other and like they're running plays on the mat. And I I was number one, so disrespected and in so disbelief. But deep down, I was like, this is the most fucking cold-blooded thing I've ever seen. <laughs> they got us. Mo- yeah, yeah. More disrespectful than you could ever – you could have talked about Tom Ryan's mom and it wouldn't be as disrespectful as this. So what was yeah. – so was the well, – first off, was the guys like, are you kidding? Like, well, they it, didn't see it because they were in the back. Oh. So basically they come out – they have the mat for their warm-ups yeah, for about 10 yeah. minutes. They go back to the locker room. The visiting team comes out for about 10 minutes, and then it's about five minutes till mm. showtime. So really, I'm down there on the bench with, you know. That's cold-hearted. Yeah, some of the assistant coaches. And I'm just like, and everyone's fuming because they can see it and they know, like, why they're doing it. Yeah. Like, these motherfuckers. Mm, That's something gangster. And they whooped our ass, too. Because they knew it. They knew it, yeah. So it was just, uh, it was one of those dual meets where the momentum kind of got away from us. We lost a couple close matches early. You know, McKenna lost. Pletcher lost two of our best guys. Colin ended up getting pinned. I mean, it was a bad. So they it makes you hate them, but then is but that, you can't help but respect it in a but way. That's mm. part of that, and that's that's a great I think explanation mm. of the line I was kind of trying to talk about because yeah. then that's that they know they're great. Come, come and take, and, come and in reality, us. were they really doing anything that was mean? Towards no. them? You know what I mean? 
That's, that's what that's what makes it so cold blooded, really, because you can't get mad. It's, they'd be like, "Well, what? We're just out there. We're doing playing football to warm up." Yeah. I mean, what if your squad didn't warm up? They went out and ran football we, drills in the outfield. Our, our guys do it all the time. Do that. We run. Uh, it yeah. would be it would be the equivalent of what if they came out and just did like uh, they did the electric slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our guys, yeah, no, no. Our guys will do it. They'll run pass routes, but it's just yeah. That we baseball is a lot of downtime. You yeah, know, yeah, not, yeah. This, it's not. You're not as geared up. You're. But I think all this stuff, whether it was Penn State, I, you know, you, I'd like to know a little bit the, the behind the curtain of that story of why they did that. Like, what, like what was it to be lose? Like, there, there had to be some intentionalness. They no, wanted to demoralize no, Ohio they, State. They, they did it because they wanted to show the crowd because it was, it might have been even sold out. That was when we were still at St. I, John's, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. You know, the years start to kind of blend mm. together, but I feel like it was one of those things where they wanted to come out and just show the crowd that like they didn't, they didn't give us the same respect. That we had to give them because they were the best, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it was probably a year that we we might have been number two, number three in the country. Yeah, we, it's we like right it was there. close, but they wanted to show. How they wanted to show the to them it wasn't close. You're not on our level. Yeah, no, I, I think any any of that stuff. You know, you know, you mentioned trash talk, trying to get in their head. I heard Reggie Miller, who's a famous trash oh, talker, Hooper. Yeah, amazing. The, the big the big misconception there is he, he said he trash talks to to get out of his head. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's not he's not doing it to mess with you. He just he's that gets him that gets him out of his mind space. And able into, into I trash into talk myself all the time. Yeah, yeah. But if I but if I'm talking smack to you, then then I don't know. Then it this, yeah. I, sometimes it helps people. So I think that's what we're all kind of trying to figure out here is that you're trying to get optimal performance. And what is that? Did did you get too hype on the bench where you couldn't perform at the highest level, or did yeah. you get so caught up in your bat flip that it distracts you from actually competing and trying to win the game in front of you? So I think you're always trying to blend those lines. Or am I being so quiet in his shell on the other side of this? Yeah. That, not that, getting that, it. that the Tigers not coming out. So, as a coach, you're trying to find that homeostasis. Can, that can I give you yeah. a scenario? Yeah. So, you got a kid that's you know throwing 93. He's nasty. He's confident. He's chirping your biggest rival on Twitter. Yo, I'm pitching. You can't. You know, you guys can't hit me. Type stuff. And he goes out and he delivers. Is it like? Is that something you still got to address? <laughs> I'm just making up a yeah. situation. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but it yeah, could. Yeah, but yeah. it could happen yeah, though. Yeah, it's Mike. gonna get me out of season. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're right in the we're right in the thick of it. Well, right because the thing no, is, uh, if a, if a kid come and delivers that confident and he throws a two hitter shutout, like you can't guard me. Basically, you can't hit me. It's like, can you really suppress that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I just don't. I, I don't. I just. Is there just no room for that? Yeah, for me. Ma- yeah. yeah, for in your me program. today, in, yeah. in our program, and and and, and I, I'll just keep going back to it. That's just, the right answer. Then. I just don't know if it's sustainable. Yeah. I don't know if it's sustainable. Well, I don't. Yeah. To play at the highest level, to 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 do those things and to and to get results, I just think. Yeah. It, I think it's a waste. You can't of keep it, it up. I think it's a waste of energy. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a waste of energy. I think you're better served. Instead of chirping there, just like having a great bullpen, kicking ass in your recovery, you know, yeah. like doing all those things, that's going to be more beneficial in the long runs. I think a lot of times people play finite games where they think, okay, so even if even if you throw that shutout that game, yeah, that's awesome, whatever. But yeah, one of my favorite stories when I was at Marietta, we went forty-seven and four one year, and we got beat. It was it was by Denison at the time, and when I took the job, the guy said, "Hey, we beat you guys that year." Like it was a Tuesday night in April when it was thirty five. Yeah, yeah. We went on to win twenty four games straight after that, <laughs> including <laughs> yeah. Yeah, including a, a national title. Like, yeah, your energy's on something. So yeah, yeah I, chir- I chirped you and and we shut you out in a regular season game. Big deal and to me. It's not a big. I deal. I would say the scenario I gave you probably happened probably is happening in high school though on snapchat and shit oh, like i think time. so i think that this Cause, you, cause, maybe the next level cause, it's cause not because i'm not I, and i'm not trying to sound arrogant but when you've been in those spaces i don't know man i'd probably laugh at your guy if, if of course you, 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 you scored a goal on me big deal like yeah, 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 yeah. cool cool you know you guys you won yeah. 500 like big yeah. deal like we're, we're trying to win a world series yeah i like and, that and our energy's there our energy's in on on that your energy's on your 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 social media chirp or your bad yeah. flip or whatever like we're we're okay cool you guys do that you you got us today but we're now working 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 and we're going to beat you whenever i matters. think it's good for young coaches to hear you talk like this so mike that's why i was egging yeah, you yeah, on yeah 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 because it's it's yeah once it's again, a winning mentality it's a winning mentality and, and what i'll say is once again it sounds horribly but, but when you're in that cluster of people who know who like really know like yeah you know, bro, of course like you're kind of hey, you're kind of laughing at those people. It's not arrogant when you earn the right to be in that cluster. And, and, and Mike. I, I, don't, I don't even know if I'm in it, but I'm yeah, just saying yeah. like I, I've I've seen some things that not everyone gets to see. Of course. And then so by doing that, you you see some behavior. You're like, 
Yeah, it's fucking You're, amateur small time am, shit. Amateur stuff. Amateur yeah, I get stuff. It. Like cool. Believe me, I've I've been dealing yeah, with it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you, I think that's what that's what I know because I'm like, all right, like like deep down inside that OG over there in the other dugout's laughing at us because we beat them and we're celebrating and it's great. But he knows this isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like there, he's he, he's dusting the trophy off at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. You got us in March. Uh, yeah. But but let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Anyways, I think I'm always guard, and I'm always guarded against that. Yeah, no, I think that I think this is great advice because you've probably seen a bunch of it on the high school level, Trevor. Uh, high school is a little bit different because like I don't see all the social media stuff, but I know what's going on, and I know that they're and I don't either, by the way. I don't watch that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I know they're putting their energy into the wrong things. Yeah, and it's like, but in in my opinion, not not to counteract no, what you you're counteract. saying, yeah. but like, if have you had to address this stuff? Uh, a couple of times, yeah, and. And most recently this weekend during the club team that I'm the head coach of at the tryouts. Congrats, but, by the way. Thank you. Um, if if I see him start to chirp on social media, I'll tell him to cut it out and we'll beat him on the field. It's like if you want to score a goal and go celebrate with your fans, yes. that's one thing. But if you want to demoralize your opponent, do it on the field by winning, not by trash talking or calling them any sort of names or anything like that. Like there has to still be a level of sportsmanship to it. Like social media, get off of it. Go beat them on the field. Go celebrate with your fans, and then post a picture that you want. Like yeah. post a picture of the score. But here's so, what. I, here's what. Go ahead, D. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was gonna say. So, do you think you know, especially at the at the high school level, because you're gonna have such a wide range of actual abilities and talents there? Do you give a little bit more leeway to like the star guys that really do back it up versus the guys who like maybe they're chirping, but it's like, hey, you're on the bench and you're chirping. <laughs> you know what I mean? As a as a coach, the answer is no. But as a human, the answer is yes. Right. If my star player. So what, what about in the in the moment in the game, though? You know what I mean? If my star player is out there chirping their best player, and, and he's, like, doing it in the least, like, demeaning way. Like, you know, he scores a goal, and he, like, comes over and does, like, he has, like, this heart celebration, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that's fine. Now if he's out there and he's like, hey, you're a piece of trash, I'm going to just, yeah. like, beat you up and down the field, that's something that needs addressed. But if he's – you know, out there doing it, and then I have a player on the bench that's trash talking the other team. I'm like, yo, like, know your role, yeah. because he's out there doing it. He's proving that he's better by his play, and then he'll celebrate his play if he scores. You're on the bench, like, you don't need to be telling the other team that that they suck. Basically, I was thinking about as you were talking, um, and I was thinking about with business, right? Because in theory, whether it's here, whether it's in the gym, there's teammates on and off, right, over time. And especially the ones that are, quote unquote, disgruntled at times. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I've never addressed one of them socially, ever. Because, to me, it's amateur and small time. And because I want to be the guy that's like, this motherfucker again? Mm -hmm. Still winning. Mm -hmm. And I am brushing off the fucking trophies. <laughs> and so that's me mm -hmm. be running the line on how confident I am about what I'm doing and where the path and what's happening. So, but to, to your point, that's how I operate that mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. so it's it's you know so that is my answer too it's like because i've had levels and been in rooms and success i know that is the ultimate killer yeah. because that's the dagger because then it's like Ugh. you know what i mean so in, in whether i'm making that up in my head or it's all real i think about it going whoever that met whoever that person is that i'm pissed like the jordan mm -hmm. shit like yeah, he yeah. makes yeah, shit yeah, up yeah, i want people to go fuck Mm -hmm. Gee, again? Mm -hmm. Like, now I'm so tired, I didn't pack my lunch. <laughs> right. So I can't outlast this guy, which right. is the truth for well, most. I always think, you know, by addressing the disgruntled person or, you know, teammate or the uh, employer, whatever it is, by addressing it, you're in a way legitimizing yeah. whatever their argument is. And I'm is. giving it power. Yeah, so if you just ignore it, then it's you haven't given any power goes, to it. To me, it goes crickets. And when it's crickets, it doesn't matter. Right. And when it doesn't matter and I keep winning, does it still matter? No. You're not on my level, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, so to your point, I was just trying to back up yeah. what you were saying because I was, I was thinking about it. I was like, this is exactly how mm -hmm. I operate too. Because chirping it gives it too much power in any type of shine. And when you're in a position, you're in a position that people are paying attention to. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think one other thing off that, whether it's Ohio State, Penn State, or you know, a, a, two top lifters going at it, or two UFC fighters, there's like this unique space once you get into that space where uh, there's so peop few people in the world who know how much sacrifice went into that moment. Like so two elite teams play each other or two elite wrestlers go at it. There's a mutual respect there where I don't, 
I don't know. I, when when we win, I don't feel great because against against a high level opponent, mm. it's, it's a weird feeling. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just saying because I know how much has went into the other side, and they come up on the they didn't get the result this time. Yeah. But but the like just so few people in the world know how much time, energy, how many kids' games you missed, how many, you know, how much sacrifice went into this moment, and and just you two do. The fans think they know it. Yeah. The parents think they know it. Everybody, but only these two people. So you learn to love your opponent a lot of times, and and you don't want to do anything to really, I don't know, like like you when you play really high stakes games. I could win or I could lose. Penn State could have won that match. Ohio State, they would have got a few other results. It could have flipped on them. So, but anyways, I, I think that's where trash talk and disrespect. It, well, Penn no State place. doesn't care if they're if the other team respects them or not. They they're like it seems to the demeanor I've seen, and I'm not even around. Yeah, yeah. That's, they want to be the villain. They're they're <laughs> it's a weird right? dynamic because they're like the good guy villains. <laughs> yeah, you know I, mean? like, I don't it's, know. It's a, Are they? <laughs> Yeah, because I mean they don't really, they don't trash talk they don't do anything I don't know it's they, a weird they, dynamic. They, well, they they're, do it with the subtle ones. Yeah, yeah, like they're that. they're a villain by being so good. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> which where, happens where, to a lot. Whereas too. like Iowa is like the heel. Iowa yeah. is like they're like the the bad guys. You know what yeah, I mean? Everyone yeah. loves to hate Iowa. They trash talk. They're mean. They'll shove you after the match. That type of thing. Yeah. Penn State does everything right, but they do do the subtle things like that. that. That's so right. they're they're like killing you by winning. That, yeah, that's what I'm shooting for. That, yeah, that's that's, that's Marietta baseball. Yeah. That's Marietta baseball. You just you just win. Everyone's just like, dude. yeah. They want to make up things to be mad at you about because yeah, yeah. because but you just lost. That's all. That's 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 what you're mad at. So I came by the doubleheader the other day, mm-hmm. which was awesome. Uh, the infield looks great yeah, with the turf. Looks super sick. The uh, you wear not a regular ball cap. You wear the um, like the catcher's. Yeah, hat. you have you have the coach the coach bases. You have oh, to, so you so you basically gotta have like a helmet yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. I was it. gonna say I I messed with that look though. I think it's hardcore. <laughs> I was thinking like so I saw so me and Andon. You know, Andon's got a broken finger. I'm trying to find some stuff to do. I'm like, oh, Deegan got a double hitter. I'm gonna go check him out. We're sitting there and I'm like, you you know, I didn't see it at first. You brought the dugout and you got like the the catcher's helmet on. I'm like, not the catcher. It's, yeah, it's, it's old school yeah, shell cap. It, yeah, right, shell cap. And I'm yeah. like. It's like the old school version of what, like, I was like, all right, D, like, I like it. Yeah, you get a, get a stack now, you get a catcher's yeah, helmet yeah. from that. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, I messed with that look. Yeah, yeah. no, so. no, that was, it's just, it's just NCAA rules. You had to have oh, a, I thought you know, there was an edge no, there I was, no, no, I was no. uninformed about. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. <laughs> uh, anything else to add to this, guys? I think it was a good topic. Absolutely, it was great. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think that there's uh, something that people are drawn to when it comes to that edge, but then going over top of it, I think the, you know, the experiences and the stories that you guys all shared were really, uh, we're all around the topic in, in a good way. I think there's a lot of value here. It's cool. I think there's a fine line, and if you cross it, be careful of the repercussions, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whether it's from the other team or from your own coaches or whatever. Yeah, it's Be good. careful. All right, Coach's Clinic Podcast. from boy, Corey G., Mike Deegan, Tyler Treadway, Dustin Myers. We are out.